The traffic situation at Los Angeles International Airport has long been an issue, but it's only become worse due to the increased popularity of ride-sharing services like Uber and Lyft. However, LEX has implemented a new process that seems to be working, and this same process will likely be used at other busy airports and venues in the near future. Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Ernest from TripAstute. In this video, I'm going to cover the new process of getting an Uber, Lyft, or taxi ride at LEX, as well as some tips in case you happen to be visiting LEX. Let's be honest, traveling through LEX is an absolute nightmare when it comes to traffic. It's taken about an hour in the past to get a ride from the airport since drivers get stuck in the loop that serves all nine terminals. In fact, even when I picked up Fiona from the airport, it's taken me close to an hour to get through the loop, which is insane. So it wasn't a total surprise to hear that the Los Angeles International Airport implemented a new approach for Uber, Lyft, and taxi pickups. In fact, the new process was actually piloted at the Portland International Airport earlier this year. So if you traveled through Portland and requested an Uber at the airport, you might have already experienced this new process. The initial implementation at LAX was bumpy though. There were a lot of complaints from travelers who had to wait for extended periods of time. However, it looks like ride-sharing companies and airport officials have managed to figure it out and honestly I wouldn't be surprised if the process becomes the standard model at other airports and venues with similar congestion problems maybe even at an airport near you which is why I thought I would do an entire video on it but before we jump into the today's topic if you're new here welcome to our channel Tripistu is a travel channel that is focused on sharing ways to make travel easier affordable and more enjoyable traveling can be stressful and expensive so we're looking for ways to help you maximize your experience through travel tips points of miles and innovative gear if that sounds interesting to you please consider subscribing. For those of you who are familiar with calling an Uber or Lyft ride at the airport, you're probably used to timing the calls so that you're minimizing the amount of time that you're waiting for a driver. In fact, Fiona and I argue about this all the time because she prefers to request a ride as soon as we're walking off the plane, while I prefer to do it when we're closer to the airport exit. I think I'm just paranoid of getting a low rating as a passenger in the event that my driver gets there before me. But with this new process, it doesn't really matter since you're not actually reserving a driver when you do it. So let me run through the process of booking an Uber at LAX. This process should work for Lyft as well, but for the sake of simplicity, I'll show you how I did it on my Uber app. To start off, you can't request a ride sharing pickup in the departures or arrivals loop like you could before. Pickups now occur in a special lot next to Terminal 1. To get there, you'll want to follow the signs to LA Exit, which is what the new pickup area is called. You'll jump on the shuttle, which will then take you to the LA Exit lot. Keep in mind that it's not just Uber and Lyft that are using the lot, but also taxi companies. So if you prefer to use a taxi, then you'll still want to go to the LA Exit lot. Though to be honest, I think you're better off taking an Uber or Lyft ride. You'll not only pay less, but you won't have to exchange money with the driver since the transaction takes place in the app. The rest of the process is mostly the same as a normal ride. The big difference is that instead of matching your ride with a driver, you're provided a code instead. Depending on the service that you use, you'll go to the appropriate line. You basically follow the signs to the service provider that you use. You'll then be paired with the next available driver who will then ask you for your PIN before you enter the vehicle. The driver can still deny you a ride based on your destination or rating, so keep that in mind. Though if you are denied, you can always try another driver to see if they'll take you. And that's it. It's not that big of a difference, but I can see how travelers might get confused, especially since everything is so fast paced once you get to the lot. The key takeaways for me were that you're essentially getting the next available driver instead of a specific driver that is matching your request. This means that you're not at the mercy of your driver canceling the ride at the last minute, which happens often when there's a lot of traffic. On the flip side, it means that the driver could deny your ride, which might be an issue if you're traveling somewhere extremely far from the airport. Also, you don't have to request your ride as soon as you land. In fact, you can do it anytime before you meet a driver, even while you're waiting in line. I have a feeling that they're going to use this exact same system for other airports and venues. For example, I tried getting a ride from the Hollywood Bowl a few months ago and had about five different drivers cancel on me since the area is so congested. I think making it first come, first served in these types of situations is a win for riders. So hopefully a similar setup is in the works for venues where there are huge surges of riders. At least I hope they're planning to do it. I vowed never to take an Uber to the Hollywood Bowl or Dodger Stadium ever again. So I'm hoping that they extend the service to other locations. Finally, I want to share a few tips to keep in mind when getting a ride at LAX. Number one, LA exit only applies to pickups. If you're planning to get a ride to the airport, then you can still be dropped off at the terminal of your choice. The LA exit program only affects pickups departing the airport. Number two, compare prices. You'll want to check the prices between Uber and Lyft when requesting rides. I do this all the time whenever I ride anywhere since the differences can be substantial, especially during peak times. 
Depending on the supply of drivers and the demand of riders, the service can enter surge or prime time pricing, which means that you could be charged extra for your trip. It pays to check both services to compare prices. On that note, number three, familiarize yourself with the general rate. It helps to know the general price for a ride from the airport to your destination. I recommend checking the rates for both Uber and Lyft in advance using their websites. The Uber fare estimator gives you the estimated rate and also lets you enter the day and time that you'll be traveling. It relies on historical data to give you the estimated rate. Lyft, on the other hand, doesn't let you specify the time or date of travel, but instead gives you an estimated range. You can find both of these pages by searching for Uber and Lyft fare estimator, though I'll include a link in the video description as well. Also, I tried a few websites that are designed to give you an estimated price for both, but couldn't seem to find one without issues. So I recommend checking the fares directly on the ride sharing service sites. Number four, consider using other transportation options. If you're seeing high prices or a high volume of travelers like during a holiday, you might consider taking other transportation options to get away from the airport before relying on ride sharing services. LAX, for example, has a bus service that can transport you to one of four locations in the greater LA area. At the time of this video, the fare ranges from eight to $10, which is an excellent deal. Once you arrive at the flyaway bus station, you can get an Uber or Lyft ride, which should be cheaper if it's closer to your destination. Also, in the past, there was a trick that a lot of Los Angeles travelers would use to bypass the airport traffic. This involved taking hotel, car rental, or parking lot shuttles to get away from the airport terminals. In fact, a lot of people would use the parking spot to pull with a lot shuttle to get the In-N-Out burger, then get a shuttle ride back to the airport. I don't think that this trick still works. The parking lot shuttles now require that you show your parking reservation ticket when entering the shuttle. Using the hotel and rental car shuttles probably still works, but it's hard to say. Though if you're adventurous, it might be worth trying the hotel shuttles to get away from the airport and arrange your Uber and Lyft ride from there. And finally, number five, use a rewards card. Most of you probably know this already, but some credit cards classify ride-sharing services as travel. This includes Chase cards like the Sapphire Preferred and Reserve. The American Express Platinum offers a monthly Uber credit, and the US Bank Cash Plus also classifies Lyft and Uber as ground transportation, which is one of the 5% bonus categories. If you're someone who uses ride-sharing services often, then it might be worth getting a card that can reward you for it. Have you used a new ride-sharing process at LAX or Portland? If so, what's been your experience? If you're new to ride sharing apps and are looking for some additional Uber tips when traveling, check out our video on the topic. It should help you with learning how to use a service. And if you need a discount code for your first Uber or Lyft ride, you can use our referral codes and links in the video description or on our website. Also, if you're interested in applying for a credit card, we would love it if you use our link in the video description or on our website. It's an easy way to support our channel, especially if you found our content to be valuable and helpful. And if you need any help with picking the right credit card or developing a card strategy, sign up for our free card consultation service. You basically fill out a questionnaire and schedule a 15 minute video or audio call with me to review your recommendation. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If so, please give us a thumbs up and consider sharing the video with others. As always, we appreciate you checking out our video and channel. Until next time, travel safe and travel smart.